Hey everybody, it's me, it's Undead Viking. I'm here with another video review uh, coming to you semi-live in my gaming dojo in Moorhead, Minnesota. Uh, the game that I'm reviewing today is a game called Corporate America from Nothing Sacred Games. Uh, this is a game that was successfully kickstarted and then published, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't have a copy in my hand, and they were kind enough to send me a copy for the purpose of this review. Um, Nothing Sacred Games uh, and this game, Corporate America, I think is their only game. I'm sure they have more coming down the pipe. But um, Corporate America is um, what I would consider uh, kind of a throwback game in a lot of ways. Um, and what I mean by that is is that like when I first kind of got into the whole... Uh, board gaming stuff, like I mentioned a lot of times that Arkham Horror was like the first designer board game I ever got, and that's kind of true, but uh, prior to that, uh, you know, I had some dalliances in the board game world, if you will, and, uh, you know, I played uh, Zombies, and I played Talisman, and um, there's a few other ones out there. I can't, you know, recall. I remember going into my comic book store and seeing this game, Settlers of Catan, on the wall and thinking, wow, that looks kind of neat. But um, then I'd read the back and there wasn't any, like, explosions or anything. So I was just like, eh, maybe not. And I'd put it back, you know. So, um, and so I have pretty firm Ameritrash roots. And one of the very firm Ameritrash games that I remember playing a lot of was Illuminati from Steve Jackson Games. And Steve Jackson Games, I own a lot of stuff by them. And um, when I played this game, I got kind of sort of reminded of it just a little bit. And I kind of alluded to that a little bit in my uh, top 30 games of uh, 2013, of which this uh, was part of. Now, um, I'm leaving that purposely vague because I want to go into it more with my conclusion. But what I mean by a throwback game is that it seems like now um, like games like seem to have to... Uh, have multiple different layers of strategy and mechanics and actions and things that go on. And back in the day, when I first started playing uh, these games, there really wasn't a lot of that. It was it was pretty straightforward. You had like a sheet of rules, and they just kind of let you go. And um, you 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 would run into rules issues and problems or unswallow it. People just house ruled stuff and just said, "Well, that's kind of a stupid rule. Let's do it differently, like this." And and, and that was just kind of the way we played. But um, what I found with a lot of those games in the past, what they relied upon uh, was the players themselves kind of making the game, and not by making the rules or or like you know coming up with how to play the game or anything like that. But what I mean is, is that the interaction and the negotiation and and the people playing off of each other. Uh, was the game instead of the game giving you rules that you played and that's kind of what corporate america reminds me of and, I, and it, maybe that's you know the nostalgia aspect of it and also the fact that i i have a great gaming group uh for negotiation backstabbing type games um that uh you know we we it just had a blast playing this in the past year so i'm going to show you as i always do how to play the game uh corporate america and then uh, I'll come back and I'll tell. I'll go in a little further into what I meant by a throwback game and, and what I meant um, as far as, um, you know, why it reminds me a little bit of Illuminati and things like that. And I'll tell you exactly, uh, you know, why uh, this game may or may not uh, fit on your shelf uh, for you and the guys and girls in your gaming group. All right, so Corporate America, here we go. Okay, this is the game board for Corporate America. Um, this is pretty much all the components as well. Uh, the only thing you're not seeing here is the extra executive privilege cards because of the fact that you do not use all of them in the game. In a three or four player game, you will use four of those cards. In a five or more player game, you will use three. And that's because that's kind of like the, uh, the, the timer of the game. Once those cards are used up, uh, then the game is over. Uh, you could probably uh, decrease or increase the number of cards if you wanted, if you wanted to shorten or lengthen the game. That, that's probably just up to you, though. Uh, this is the only wooden bit in the game, and pretty much the only thing that isn't a card, um, besides the board. And this is just used to track uh, the turns of the game. Um, obviously, this is the Washington Monument. Uh, fun fact, when I was in my first grade Mrs. Lips class, um, she showed a picture of this. Uh, well, not this, the, the real Washington Monument. And uh, she asked, what is this? And I immediately raised my hand. And um, she called on me. And as God is my witness, I don't know why I said this, but I said, that's the Pennsylvania pencil. And I, of course, was wrong. I don't even know where I came up with that. And... Uh, <laughs> 
at, at that point, much laughter at, at, at my expense was made by my first grade class, uh, and many tears were shed. Very, very, very sad memory in my lifetime. But anyway, uh, we can all laugh about it now, right? <laughs> anyway, so... Um, this is the game board, and to begin the game, you, you set up the Executive Privilege deck. Um, depending on the number of players, you get a certain number of business cards in your hand to begin with. Uh, you get five cards if you have three or four. You get four cards if you have five or six. Um, business cards, I'll show a couple to you really quick before we do the rest of the Wall Street turn. Uh, business cards uh, have like kind of a funny name to the business. Like you can say this is Mud Hole Acupuncture, keeping you healthy inside and out. And it has a cost to build or to make it start the business, and then it has an income. So whenever either of these two uh, icons are done in the consumer phase of the game, uh, they are, you know, those are are used, and then and if you have them, then you make that kind of money. Um, some of these cards, and I'll see, like, here's one. It's like, da boozy, all the booze, none of the carbs. You know, $7, and it earns you 6 um, some of them actually like earn money faster. The Porn Emporium, you know, it consumes sin and it makes you nine dollars. But see, there's only one, so like to use that, like it costs a little bit more. And then I'm gonna try to find one that actually has a a negative effect. And um, you'll you'll see it when you. There we go. So the Mobile Mansion RVs, and so you can see, it cost eight. Transportation at home will, will will get you earn you the six bucks, but you can see it's polluting, and so what that means is is that if you have that type of uh, business, and the legislation is passed that uh, is that that harms uh, polluting, um, you know obviously that's going to work against you, and so it's part of the game that you know, when we get to legislation uh, you'll see that more clearly, but uh, it's something to to think about when you place those businesses down. Obviously, as well, it's very important to know how to diversify, if you will, into different businesses uh, for, for when you're doing consumer. Because if you have, like, the same type of businesses as, like, lots of people have, I mean, all of you are earning money then at the same thing. And so if you're all earning money, then you're not really winning because the person with the most money at the game wins the game. So you need to know when you need to, like, have the same stuff as other people. So then, like, you all work together with that. But you also need to know when to diversify, if you will, so you can kind of break away and earn money when nobody else does. Um... After you, uh, after the first turn, you get your first business cards. You still will draw two business cards and discard one, and then uh, each person will play one business card in front of them. They'll build a business, except for the first turn. On the first turn, um, if you're playing with three or three or four people, uh, you'll you'll place. Uh, four businesses and if you're playing with uh, five or six you'll place three businesses so you'll kind of get a, a good chunk of businesses and you, you pay for them with your starting money um with if i remember correctly uh you have like three 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 two one uh with three or four and it's like three three two two one one i believe with five so with more people you have a little bit less money um just you know it, but you all start off at the same so once everybody's built their business you go over to Wall Street, and now you're going to start using these consumer cards. And with the consumer cards, um, what these have is they have a thing that tells you to consume. And that means that anything that has luxury, any business has luxury, will earn money. And and so a lot of these cards, um, you know, just consumer energy, stuff like that. And there are some cards that are called protest cards. And, you know, the zombie Reagan for Prez, and they have this, this icon, the Republican icon. And so... If you do turn over a protest card, you'll place it in the protests area because they affect the game uh, once you get to the Capitol Hill function. But we'll talk about that in just a moment. So how this works is that each player in turn... <coughs> excuse me. Each player in turn uh, gets to turn a card over. And they for turn the first card over for free. The second card to turn over, it costs them four dollars. The next one six, the next one eight, next one ten, and so on and so forth. And when you turn a card over, you just look at it and you see what it is. So this consumes sin. Now, if you're lucky and you have a uh, a a business that would earn you money with sin, you can just say, "I'm going to stop there," and then you place it in one of these locations that's on this board, and so you can show that you're done. Now, if that isn't helpful to you, you can turn another card over. And you can see, okay, well this one consumes media. 
Now, do I have a media card? Now, the interesting thing here is that um, you can stop at any time, and the other players at any time can offer you money. They can say, hey, pick media, pick media, I'll give you $3. You know, maybe they have a couple of media uh, businesses that will earn them uh, good money this turn, and, you know, they try to convince you to do that. And so then you can have open negotiation, you know, as far as what goes on. And, like, and even some people, that we've had games where it's like, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll pay for the next card as long as you don't pick media. And so then, you know, you turn another card over, like so. And here we, okay, then we get a protest. So what you do with the protest is you go ahead, like I said, you put it up there, and the person that turns it over gets to turn another card over for free, for nothing. And so they get done, and, like, let's say, oh, well, actually, you know what, I'm going to take Consume Health. And so they put that there, and they pick their card, and that's and they put the other two in the discard like that, and that's the card they pick. And so then the next person does the same thing, and I'm just going to fill this out. I'm not going to go through the whole process of of each card uh, being uh, picked here. And just and you can see, oh, there's another one. What would Jesus do? Uh, and and these are like what's what's going to happen is that eventually, like all of these. And there we go. So okay. So then we get we get all the consumption cards out. And so now, um, once they're all placed, now is when each person is going to earn money for the businesses that they have. And there is a synergy bonus if you happen to have a business that like actually um, uh, like more than one of the same kind, like say you had, you know, more media than one, um, and you can barely see it, but with two businesses, you earn an extra $2, with three, you earn an extra five, four, you earn an extra nine, and so on and so forth, up to seven, if you have seven businesses, you earn an extra $27, so like the synergy bonuses can really start adding up, but you get done with this, um, you find out what each person makes, and then each person uh, takes their cash um, out of uh, the, the treasury and adds it uh, to their total. And once that's done, then we're done with the consumer and the, the Main Street uh, portion of the turn. So we'll go ahead and collect these and discard them like so. And we'll move on to the campaign, yeah, campaign trail uh, portion of the game. It is important to note, when you get to the campaign trail portion of the uh, game, you do not get to bribe anybody at this point. So just uh, keep that in mind. But the first thing you do is you will turn over six legislation cards. And I'll show you some of these uh, more closely here in just a moment. And you turn over six like that, and each person takes a time um, to look at this legislation and and see um, you know what... Uh, it does and whether or not it'll help or hurt them. Like, take a look at, let's say, like this one right here. Eh. So, uh, it is a wilderness protection. It's a tax. Uh, polluting and home businesses have minus two income. So, if you have either of these icons, uh, you would have minus two income. And this is a law. And when something is a law, it stays in play. And so you place it down here to remind you that it stays in play uh, until it is revoked. Some cards aren't laws, like this, where it's the super committee. And you can see he's blind, he's throwing it behind him. And revoke a law at random. So that's something. And you'll notice that there's two spots here that are open, and those have not been revealed yet and won't be revealed until a president is elected. And so. The important thing to remember is that these protests have to be uh, have to be solved, uh, if at all possible. Meaning that a law has or law or a, a legislation in general has to be passed that is going to have the same icon as up here, if at all possible. If you can't do it, um, you it'll just stay there until uh, it comes back around and it'll just be up there for as a problem that the next president will have to deal with. But at this point, what happens is, is everybody kind of, you know, well, negotiates or argues, basically, uh, saying who would be the best president. And each person, you know, try to limit this as much as possible because people can just go on and on. But, I mean, just they can say, you know, I'll be the president because I'll get rid of this or I'll, I won't touch these and I'll make sure that, you know, I don't pass this law, or I won't pass this, and you know none of this is binding, of course. But you can just say, "I'll do this, I'll do that," and then you finally get and you move on to the bidding rounds. And what happens now is people take the money that they have, and each person in turn gets to place 
a number of dollars, a number of these cards, face down, like this, remember I told you they're face down for a reason, face down uh, to uh, show, you know, because face down, what I mean by that is like, obviously because face down, it looks exactly the same, uh, each one. But um, the face down, and it, it, it goes around and like, you put that down and like, and for the person that you want uh, to be the next president. And so you go around, each person does that, and you can put it in front of you if you want, doesn't matter. And then you go on to the next round. And remember, though, this is money that, this these are the victory points, basically. So if you're spending them, this is a nice little seesaw where you're trying to decide, well, how much is this worth to me? And you do it again, and you go to the next round, and you do it again. And finally, you'll end up at the Capitol Hill phase. And now is when you're going to determine uh, who is uh, the next president uh, for this next round. To do this, you turn over each person's cards they have in front of them as far as the, their, their amount of money. And whoever got the most money basically donated to them uh, was able to buy the votes, and they're the next president. Um, the first thing the president gets is they get to take one of these executive privilege cards. And they just take this, and they put it in front of them, and they get to keep it. And so, like, here we'll see this. Uh, use this power as a player is choosing a consumer card to be played during the Main Street phase. Uh, force a consumer card of your choice to be played instead. And so, like, you can, you so see, keep this, and you put that in front of you, it's just a way to break the rules, basically. And then, as the new president, you turn over two new pieces of legislation, like so. And now, it is up to you to decide, uh, you know, uh, whether or not uh, you will, uh, you know, which, which, which of these, you have to pick three of these, you, which of these you're going to enact as the president. And, but, as I said, remember, you have to satisfy these, uh, the, these icons, if at all possible. So, um, and you can't use one to get rid of two. So, like, if this was, like, uh, anti-government and religious, you couldn't use it to get rid of both. You can only use one of the icons that is on there. And so, obviously, at this point, you either try to make friends by saying, doing what you said, or... You can just make sure you pick the ones that uh, you know take care of you, and you know and, and hurt other people. So like, you know, you could take this one where you know it's like you don't have any sin businesses, and you can have a minus two income. You put that in the law. You know that one has the, the Christian on there, so you get rid of this one. You can go ahead and put that in the discard, and then you need to get rid of tea baggers. So you're going to look at these, and you're going to say, well, um, you know, we can go ahead and. Uh, do, 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 like, let's get rid of this one. Like, let's say, you know, you don't have finance businesses, and so you'll do that. Or, you know, maybe you do have finance business, sorry, and it's, you know, plus two income. So you put that one in the law, and so you can get rid of this one. And finally, like, hopefully maybe one or two of your people you're playing against have, uh, like, those energy ones that have the income. And so you can play this one and put that in the law as well. And you go ahead and, uh, put that aside like so now some of these like you say don't have a law and it just has a thing where it says giveaway divide $15 as you choose between players who own technology businesses and things like that and if you did those you would just you know enact those and uh you know take those and and do what the card says if you will i should have mentioned one thing and it won't happen in the first turn uh but in subsequent turns um, as you become president, you have the ability to get rid of one of the laws. Uh, this way. You can just revoke one and get rid of it. And that can be a very uh, useful tool to get yourself elected. You can promise, I will get rid of that law as long as you elect me. And then people might elect you for that purpose. But once you get done with the Capitol Hill phase, you just move on uh, to Wall Street and you continue on. Um, and, and you go around the table. Now, the game ends when all these executive... Uh, uh, all the executive privilege cards are gone, and you make it to Main Street uh, on this spot, and that is when uh, the game is over. Um, you don't continue on. That that that's the, that's the phase it in. So everybody basically gets to make money uh, that last time. That's kind of a very uh, that's a very frenzied uh, portion of the game, um, and so you total up the money after this phase is done. Um, whoever has the most money uh, wins the game, obviously. And if you have an executive privilege card uh, still in your hand, um, then you uh, get $5 for having that executive privilege card still in your hand. Now, if there's a tie, 
And, and this goes for, like, also for when you're electing the president. If there's a tie, things have to go to the Supreme Court, is what it's called. And basically what you're supposed to do then is you go to, like, somebody theoretically who is arbitrary and ask them who should win or who should win the election. And um, we've used uh, my daughter Ryland for that many times, and she's never picked me. So, because she thinks it's funny if I lose. So, um, there you go. That's how that is. But that's how you play corporate America. Now, I mean, it's pretty simple, obviously. The rules aren't really massive, by any means. But um, it is uh, the yelling and screaming and the backstabbing and the, the greed of the players and the negotiation of the players uh, that make the game fun. But I will go more into that uh, with uh, my conclusion, which I'll do right now. I haven't done a box slip in quite a oh, while. Wow. I'm pretty sure a lot of people thought I was going to come back and, you know, do something funny with this, but say no to innuendo. All right, so, um, <clears throat> corporate America. I said a lot of things, uh, you know, in, 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 the, in the preamble, if you will, before I showed you how to play the game and, and kind of gave you uh, an idea of, like, my, my, my gaming background. And I've gone into this <clears throat> way more, so I'm just going to carve up a lot of it and just kind of explain. Um, Illuminati was a game that uh, had a lot of, like, little insider jokes and little ha-ha-has. And so um, the cards in the game, as you saw, <clears throat> have lots of, of, of that stuff going on. Um, you know, especially... Uh, with 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 the businesses, you know, like you know, happy ending pictures or um, you know, uh, Farmopticon, and I think there's one like Bank of Shamerica in here, and then you know there's you know, Ogle Search, you know. Okay, so it's obviously the the designer and and, and the creators of the game uh, wanted to make little jokes and have a little fun, and and so that alone kind of um, reminded me of, of, of Illuminati back in the day. Uh, but it goes beyond that. I mean, it goes uh, to the fact that um, Illuminati and games of that ilk, uh, when I was growing up, um, were all about uh, negotiation and all about the fact that you had the freedom to like talk to the other people on the, um, at the table and say, hey, look, if you help me out uh, this particular turn, I'll, I'll, I'll help you out next turn. Or, you know, I'll give you five dollars right now if if you make sure you promise not to do this and i'll do this if you do that and you know you try doing that in a game like you know well agricola or something and and you'll, you'll get laughed at because you know that part that that game that isn't part of the game um you know it isn't uh you know there's a a rigid structure uh to the game and and i, I there's nothing wrong with that per se but i mean there is uh like a kind of a a antiquated charm, if you will, uh, when the game itself um, kind of just throws itself at you and then lets the players argue and and yell at each other over a couple of hours and then try to figure out who wins the game, and that's kind of it. I mean, um, you know, as far as like the mechanics and you know, as far as uh, how the game exactly uh, you know the, runs, if you will. There's not much to it. Uh, what it relies upon, it relies upon um, being smarter than the other people that are around you, and it relies upon being able to smile while you lie through your teeth. And and that's kind of um, one of those those wonderful, beautiful parts of the game. And, and I'm lucky enough, as I said, to have a gaming group that I've been gaming with, um, you know, since I was 10 years old, basically. And, and so we can play games like this, and not uh not have our feelings hurt if you will and we we don't um you know and and we we kind of can play off of each other and play off of that those years of friendship um you know to uh enjoy the game and because when you do kind of hammer somebody and and screw somebody over in a game like this um you know if it's your friend you get that kind of added bonus because you know you just just you know needle in them a little bit you know when it happens now that's not to say that like you couldn't play this game with strangers and still have fun i'm sure you possibly could but you can understand when you have a a a, 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 a friendship dynamic there um the, the game can be be a lot of fun just because of of the the long-standing relationships that you have uh with 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 the other people that you that you that you game with now, um, what do I like about the game? I like I like the presentation. I like the fact that the game doesn't try to get all busy and it doesn't try to be anything that it isn't. I like the fact that the game, um, you know, is 
you you can probably teach it in about five minutes. And, and I really like the fact that the game doesn't take itself very seriously. And and it seems to me that in, in a day and age when like every single designer board game uh, that you pick up has a big giant list of rules and and uh, has a very very neat like as I've said this before rigid structure to it. It's it's just nice to play a game that isn't like that every once in a while. Now, um, I know a lot of people aren't going to probably like this game just because it's not going to be their type of thing, you know, because of the fact that a lot of people don't like negotiation games, uh, you know, and and sometimes I don't like them either, especially when everybody on, uh, at the table decides they're going to hammer on me and, and uh, not help me out. But the, 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 I think the trick uh, with any good negotiation game is um, to pick your spots and, uh, you know, being able to you know, one, lie through your teeth when need be, but also uh, knowing knowing when you should tell the truth and knowing when you need to get that person uh, to start believing in you and start uh, buying into what you're selling. Uh, so, like, when the last uh, turn or so of the game is, is, is coming up, um, you can really ram that dagger into their back nice and hard uh, so you can, uh, you, you can put yourself in the spot to win. So, remember... Only one person can win this game. This isn't a game like Cosmic Encounter when where like you know multiple people can win. There can be only one winner. So have all the truces and all the all the uh, agreements you want, but be prepared in that last turn that everything goes out the window and it's every man for himself or woman for himself for that matter at that moment. So there you go. Um, what kind of people are gonna like this game? <coughs> um, uh, just fan like old school fans of board games. I think are gonna love it. Um, people that love negotiation games, th people that can, um, you know, laugh uh, at some, like, very close to being uh, bad, uh, uh, you know, non-politically correct humor, um, people that uh, are, are just able to uh, enjoy the game uh, and and not uh, take it seriously. You know, take it seriously to win, but don't, don't like, take it seriously, you know, don't... Um, this isn't a game of, of, of deep analysis paralysis and, and deep thought for each turn. This is a game that you need to be playing quick and fast and loose and, and just having a, a blast while you play it. Um, I do think the game plays better with more people. Three people, it's I tried it once and it's just kind of a wash. Because it's whenever you have a three-player game and people are, are pit against each other, it seems like one person is always the one on, on the getting the, the fuzzy side of the popsicle. And everybody else and the other two people are, are just kind of working together the entire game so that third person kind of gets uh, bent over if you will um i do think that the more people in this game the better because that kind of increases the chaos factor and a game like this kind of thrives upon that so um the games of five or six people that i've played of this uh, have definitely been more fun than the games of three or four uh if I had to nitpick and find a problem, I do think the game can take a little bit too long. Um, that can be easily rectified. You can just reduce the number of executive power cards you need to uh, go through uh, before the end of the game. Uh, you know, fairly simple way to, to solve that problem. A game like this and a game like back in the day, Illuminati as well, it, it kind of can overstay its welcome because, you know, like it, it can, especially if somebody seems to be doing better than everybody else and they're kind of running away with it. Um, you know, the game can drag on a little bit, but so if I had, if you put a gun to my head and said, what don't you like about it? Like I said, I think the game is a little bit too long. I think it should last about an hour to hour and a half. And if you wanted to, like I said, you could probably just take one or two of these cards out and, uh, just, you know, cause these, this is the timer for the game and, and just remove those from the, uh, the, the, the game. And, uh, you know, then the game would be over quicker. So there you go so uh thank you as always for watching these videos that i do uh if you have any questions or ideas or concerns about the game by all means you can post those and i'll try to answer those to the best of my ability uh in the meantime please stay tuned i've got a few more videos coming up fairly soon and uh, well as always i'm just trying to get these done as quickly as i possibly can sometimes i got a lot of time on my hands to get them done and sometimes i don't and right now i seemingly i have a lot of spare time on my hands so i'm hoping to get a lot done uh, in the recent and near future. So, uh, until the next time you watch another one of my videos, thank you very much for watching it. Without you, I wouldn't do this. So, I appreciate you very much. Uh, you have an awesome day. Bye-bye now.